everybody, it's Jeremy from Tested, and I have the distinct pleasure of welcoming to the studio Darcy Neal from Lady Brain Studios and Paul Stoffregan from PJRC. Paul is the maker of the Teensy family of microcontrollers. Uh, now, Paul, for people who don't browse Google for microcontrollers, what is the Teensy family of microcontrollers? Uh, Teensy is an Arduino compatible board that's uh, very similar. You can program it with Arduino, mm -hmm. but uh, most of the Teensies have a, a more powerful processor that can do more. And uh, it's been a passion of mine over the years to enable sound applications where you can actually synthesize and process sound with Arduino. Right, so I know you've developed a sound board for your Teensy 3.2 as well as a great sound library. Um, are you one of the people as a, as a synthesizer expert who has used Paul's hardware in order to create instruments or synthesizers? Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. have you done with that in the past? Um, I've used the Teensy microcontroller for several different applications. Mm -hmm. um, I guess an example is one of them is we had proximity sensors that we were able to play different sine wave frequencies just off at the distance of your hand. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And then I did a, a year-long collaboration with the Flaming Lips for some sound reactive lighting sculptures oh, that's super that cool. use the TNC platform for that as well. Oh, very cool. And so you guys are both from the Portland area. And mm -hmm. you've come together this month or this year in order to work on a new project that you are going to have at Maker Faire. Right? For, uh, at the Kickstarter booth, is that right? Absolutely. Kickstarter uh, asked us to, to create a demo of Teensy used as a creative tool. Right. So I reached out to Darcy and, uh, and two other makers from the area. Uh -huh. In order to help you make that. And you've made it. It's right here. Yeah. <laughs> well done, guys. <laughs> this is, there it is. So this is your prototype that you laser cut out of cardboard, right? Um, just right. as a proof of concept for the scale and to see how things would fit together. All of these holes here, these are arcade buttons? Absolutely, is yes. Right? And the larger ones on different sides are speakers. This is really interesting. So this is going to be an instrument, is that right? Mm-hmm. That one person uses? It, um, I believe up to four people could use it if they wanted to. Just Definitely enough room from for people to tuck in for Simultaneously. It. Definitely yes. from the three sides, people are meant to stand around this right. and be able to touch it and play together. Mm -hmm. Very cool, guys. So you guys have developed this. How long did it take you to make this, the actual final product? It took about a month from start to finish. A month. Yeah, about one month, yeah. And you, now, they shipped all the parts here to test it. They just arrived yesterday and we are going to assemble it today, and then they're gonna bring it down to Maker Faire and put it on a display for everybody to use. So if you guys are ready, I say we get started and we build this thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, all right. Okay, let's do it.
Wow, that was a fun build. I mean, you brought all the components here pretty well wired, so it wasn't terribly difficult. Um, but wow, this thing's ginormous. Uh, compared to your cardboard mock-up, this is, this is considerable. Uh, should we give it a go? You want to plug it in? Well, let's do it. All right, go ahead. Okay, it should be on. We're looking good. All right, so we have, I see over here a bunch of arcade buttons that are now f flashing. There's a column of lights that go from side to side. I, I get the impression that's like a sequencer. That's, is that your beat going across? Mm-hmm, that's correct. And, and tell me what this is. How does this work? Uh, this is an eight-step sequencer with five different voices. Um, and you can just go ahead and choose any of the buttons that you'd like. And it'll automatically start playing it for you. Fantastic. Yeah, I like that. And what, is this? That's a tempo control, so you can okay. speed up and slow down the playback rate. Cool. So if we turn this up and get a couple more. And there's a couple of different uh, drum sounds that it cycles through, so it adds more variation to it over time. Okay, so you're saying the voices change over time? Yes. Yeah, so ah, switch, switch these out so it won't the monotonous. Yeah. So you have the volume knob back here. So you're saying over... When, when do the instruments change, you were saying? Um, it is set to a timer, so just over time, like, for example, the green channel is all hand claps. Okay. So there's several, several different hand claps uh -huh. that it will cycle through over time. And I think it's on about a minute timer or so. Oh, so and same with the bass drum and the other tracks? Yes. That keeps right. it feeling fresh. Right. Yes. <laughs> yes, the idea is it won't get terribly monotonous. Right. Because these voices will change out over time. Right. That's mm -hmm. super cool. So somebody can be standing here playing with the sequence of instruments. And then what do the, what do these sides do? You want to start over here, Darcy? Uh, yeah, this one is just a chromatic keyboard, which plays. And then you can hear there it transposed and it changed into a different Oh, because we hit structure. that minute mile marker? Yeah. Why? Cool. So we yeah. can change the way that these sound, right? By turning the knobs? Yes. This one is a filter cutoff. And this one is a decay, I believe. And then this one divides the BPM. Oh, super cool. And so what are these sensors over here? How does that work? Um, these are capacitive touch sensors. And it's just a strip of conductive copper that is using the CapSense library to... Yes, the way that these these uh, sense the amount of capacitance, they work the same way as the cell phone screens when you touch the screen uh -huh. of your phone. Yes. When you hold the phone in your hand, the back of your phone is metal, and uh, this system is connected through this power cord to the ground of the earth. Uh -huh. And so this system is grounded. So when you touch this, our bodies couple to the ground and to the earth to some degree. That's deep, man. And that small amount of coupling is sensed by the circuitry. And is this, does it matter where you put your finger on here? Um, it's just anywhere it works? No, anywhere it should work. Cool. It's the same all across. It, yeah. it just has to meet that initial threshold to trigger the notes. Got it. And so there's five over there. And no matter what you play, it's all sort of in tune. Yes. So you sound good no matter yes. what you do, sort of experiment. <laughs> yes. OK, and what's on this side? Darcy could explain this side better because she actually designed the code for this side. Why don't we switch oh, cool. places? It says this touch. The yes, way this works this is, is a touch screen that has an X and Y readout. And this one is an arpeggiator setup so that it cycles through three different notes repeatedly. So when you say touch screen, this is like the touch an LCD panel usually, but you're just yes. using the touch panel. Exactly. Oh, cool. And there you can hear it transposed again, so it's right. in the next chord. And these knobs affect only this screen? Uh, yes, this is just for the side. What do those knobs do? This one. Oh, wow. So that's your, like, beats, how many beats you get. Mm -hmm. And that's, like, it affects the intensity. Yeah, it that's multiplies awesome. the BPM. And then this is the decay for the envelope object. And so we have three different types of sounds that you can switch into. That's over what these here. buttons are for over here? Mm -hmm. So this is the arpeggiator currently. Uh -huh. This one is. 
This is using a, a synthesis technique called Carplus Strong that creates the pluck of a string. So it creates a, a so guitar. So that's, that's a not a sample. You're, that's being done programmatically? This is all being done with math in real right. time wow. as it's running, yes. Oh, neat. How, nice do you, decay how do you get that decay? Is that one of the knobs? Um, it's a feature of the car plus oh, strong okay, object it. as well as the decay knob. Oh, wow. Yes, Working it's actually music. simulating a vibrating guitar string that slowly resonates towards the note. And you get different effects based on how far X and Y you touch on this screen? Uh, yeah, each mode has uh, different effects for what the X and Y is doing. This one has a bit crusher built in. Will distort the signal slightly as right. you hit the higher values on the y axis, and then the x axis just controls the note that you're hearing. The pitch. Yes. That is super cool. And all of the tempos and pitches are, they work, they work together. They're, they all adhere to one musical mm -hmm. structure so that everybody who plays this, they all get tied together into one piece right. of music, right? Yes. Yes, one Arduino sketch, uh, which Darcy, uh, which Darcy Ross and, uh, and Ben wrote. This one Arduino sketch running on this one Teensy synchronizes all of the tempo and all of the chords together. All of the input, all of the flashing lights, all of this is running off a single board here, the, the Teensy 36, your, your newest yes, board, right? Absolutely. And then these I/O expander hardware here are right. allowing so many buttons to connect to it. And of course, the amplifiers are right. making the speakers. Right, of course. And wow. this, this right here, this is a map of the of what the sound library is looking at. Yes, is that right? Yes, Darcy could probably explain mm -hmm. how this works better than I could. Yes, this works with the audio adapter board that's connected on the TNC, mm -hmm. um, and it uses the audio system design tool, which allows you to bring in these different objects and then connect it together however you would like the sound to flow, and then it will export the majority of the code that you need that uh, works out the signal processing for it. And then for each one of these objects, there's really handy functions that you can use to trigger the different parameters of each of these. So this is essentially, like if I were making this 30 years ago, I'd be doing this with patch cables into a bunch of boards. Yes. And that's essentially what I'm looking at here, right? But you've just done it all with a mouse uh -huh. on the computer screen. Yes. Essentially and each so. of this, this top portion of the diagram is the, these five sets are the five, are the five notes over here. Oh, I see now. Yes, yes, yes. And then this middle section, these five pieces mm -hmm. are the five, five sample sounds that are being played. Right. And this bottom section is the, uh, is the three pieces of it are the three different And I see they all come together sounds. and they all get mixed together in the end. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so this is, you said this is done programmatically. The sound is done using math. Yes. Is that true for this as well? Yes. All of this sound is waveforms and filters uh, and the envelopes that are modifying the volume, okay. all and being done with math. These five instruments, these are sample based? These are pre-recorded sounds of drums, yes. OK. And so you, and, but you have five times how many versions are there? Four. For how Could many? We do four for each one. Okay. Oh, you mean different variations right. for the samples? I think. It's I about think we four. seem. I think the kick drum doesn't change, does it? It stays the same. Yeah, I think it might just be some of the claps okay, and the high hats these, and the Yes, these ones just here. The solid, so you just you know? sort all the samples in the chip, and then you're just playing them from from RAM. Yes, wow. they're playing from the memory, and Very then cool. all of the other sounds are being created mathematically as we're here. And this structure. This was your design. Yeah, put yeah the, this was laser cut. The, the whole pieces. laser cut thing. This is, I think you can add structural engineering to the litany <laughs> of other engineering skills you have, Paul. This is really, really great work. Well, I guess the next thing for you guys is to bring this off to Maker Faire, mm -hmm. uh, where you're going to meet up with your other two team members that worked on this with you. Yes. Uh, their names again, Ben and Ross? It's ben Davis and Ross Fish. Very cool. Yes. You guys should be very proud. I can't wait to see what people do with this on the floor. Um, let's go ahead and, and uh, play out, and maybe we'll put something together here while we transition to some footage of you guys at Maker Faire in a few days from now. Yes. Sound good? Excellent. All right. I'll, let's uh, see. I'm going to hop over here.
Hey, we are at Maker Faire officially, and we're here. Finally, we get to meet Ross. Hey. Uh, Ross, you helped Darcy and Ben to make all the three different sides to the synthesizer, right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. And and what side was your uh, project? Uh, I was responsible for doing this uh, side over here. It's like a polyphonic arpeggiator, right. small keyboard kind of setup, and it's uh, five pieces of copper tape here, and we're using the cap sense pins on the Teensy that are built in, and the user has the ability to change. Uh, the speed, the length of the note, and also control a resonant filter cutoff. That's awesome. Darcy, when we were talking with you uh, the other day, Paul mentioned that he wanted to do two things with this. He wanted kids to come up to it and bang on it, and he wanted parents to not tell them to stop. Were you successful? Yes, we were successful. The kids have been having a great time playing on this all weekend. Yeah. That's awesome. And so, um, has it has it functioned as expected? We've had a little, uh, we've had a few hiccups. We weren't expecting um, the power situation in here to be as strange as it was, but in the end, we we wound up working stuff out. Paul uh, whipped up another algorithm the other day, and we got everything back online. But uh, it's just interesting once you start getting all these different people in here doing a whole bunch of crazy stuff that they made out of their garage. It's, it can get a little unpredictable pretty fast. So. Well, I imagine you got a pretty good reaction. You guys have lights and sound, and when we came up here, it was blasting. Uh, it's got a really beefy sound to it. Uh, congratulations, guys. This looks really, really cool. Yeah, thank you. It's been really great being here, and it's been a lot of fun, yeah. Awesome. Congratulations, Arthur. Yeah, thank you very much.